Hello dear students welcome back to pen and paper chemistry on youtube and to my favorite dialogue please hold a pen and notebook with you please keep it ready so that we can continue with part 6 of the properties of aldehydes and ketones that is the topic that we have been uh, doing over the past few weeks so ready to go today we are going to deal with the reaction of aldehydes and ketones with alkalies as you can see again i have tabulated it so that it's easier to remember recall and rewrite you have two categories over here a reaction of aldehydes and ketones with dilute alkalies we are going to take simple naoh or koh or concentrated alkali that is again naoh or koh the first set of reactions known as aldol or ketol condensation takes place with aldehydes and ketones containing an alpha hydrogen atom the details of which i am going to explain a little later in the video on the other hand the second set of reactions known as the canizzaro reaction is shown by aldehydes and ketones having no alpha hydrogen atom so it becomes lot easier right the first set of reaction that means with dilute alkali called as aldol condensation now condensation means removal of a simple molecule now as i'll explain later on in the video it's not exactly a condensation it's more of a nucleophilic addition reaction which takes place but why do we call it condensation we will see it later Canizzaro's reaction on the other hand is an example of disproportionation reaction that is a molecule undergoes oxidation as well as reduction at the same time so the same molecule gets oxidized as well as reduced so you will get the product of oxidation and you will get a product on reduction so you will get two products over here you may want to note down this chart for easier reference for referring later on to it aldol or ketol condensation now where do we get this word from obviously aldehyde and alcohol together make aldol ketone plus alcohol take the the first so aldol and ketol the product that we get as part of this reaction actually it's not exactly a condensation in the true sense of the word it's actually aldol or ketol reaction condensation is the next step so here aldehydes or ketones containing alpha hydrogen react with the dilute alkali to give us aldol if we are reacting an aldehyde or ketol if we are reacting a ketone now the important question over here is what is an alpha hydrogen atom here i have drawn just the carbon structure the carbon chain of an aldehyde 1 2 3 4 carbon atoms in this now leave out the carbon which is the functional group carbon see the carbon which is next to it and it is called as the alpha carbon atom the greek symbols we are using the one next to it is the beta the third next to it is gamma remember we are not counting the carbon which is the functional group cho right okay let's say what about ketone so let us say we have ch3 ch2 c double bond o CH two CH three, right? So, can you tell me which is the alpha carbon atom in this structure? Look carefully. Okay, so you've got C double bond O group. This is the functional group carbon. The carbon which is immediately next to it, the carbon first carbon attached to it, will be alpha. But look, we've got a carbon here as well. So, which one of these is alpha? yes 
both of them are alpha carbon atoms so i am going to name these as alpha what about the carbon next to it it will be beta now what about hydrogen the hydrogen attached to an alpha carbon atom would be known as an alpha hydrogen atom hydrogen attached to a beta carbon would be a beta hydrogen and so on and so forth right have you noted this down so you are very clear about alpha hydrogen atom remember you don't have to count the carbon which is the functional group so cho i'm not count going to count this carbon i'm going to start from the carbon which is next to it again c double bond o i'm going to start counting from the carbon which is next to it not the c double bond o carbon so aldehydes or ketones containing alpha hydrogen they react with dilute alkali to give us aldol ketones react ketones containing alpha hydrogen react with dilute alkali to give us ketol the reaction being known as aldol reaction in general you will not find the word ketol very often um, used very often these are in general classified as aldol reactions or aldol condensations so what does an aldol reaction involve now as i said it's simply nucleophilic addition let me make your life very very simple over here i'm going to first do the basics remember we talked about the nucleophilic addition in the case of aldehydes and ketones so this acquires a negative charge this is positive and this is positive this is negative now why do i say that this is positive and this is negative this one i am going to discuss a little later when i explain why this hydrogen can get detached from the aldehyde containing the alpha hydrogen see this aldehyde also this aldehyde molecule yes both of them are same both of them are ch3 cho only only thing is in the second molecule i have put the alpha hydrogen separately and the rest of the molecule like this so positive and negative what will happen over here negative positive negative positive remember nucleophilic addition reaction so this becomes ch3 c oh h and ch2 cho look at the product it's got an all and it's got an al so what do we call it as yes the general name for this class of compounds is an aldol this is the general name of this class of compounds how can you name it using the iupac system which of these will get preference in naming do you prefer the aldehyde or the alcohol think go back to the iupac system of nomenclature yes we've covered it under a set of four or five videos there's also a pdf of the same on the channel on the site pen and paper chemistry if you google it you will find it hmm correct so aldehyde gets i like that you know you are trying it so that's good so 1 2 3 and 4 so how do we name this compound this would be called as 3 hydroxy then the word root but saturated unsaturated so it's saturated but and then one al or just al will also do so you can also write it as butanal usually position number 1 is not depicted just like when you write do you write one x or you just write x yes so you simply write x you don't write one x so we can also write this as butan one al or butanal this class of compounds is aldol now try writing a similar reaction for a ketone so there is uh, one ketone and this is the second ketone molecule of the same compound see there is no difference this is ch3 co ch3 this is also ch3 co ch3 only thing is i have put the alpha hydrogen separate negative positive positive negative go ahead and write the product so positive negative 
positive negative negative to positive don't forget the condition of the reaction what is the condition of the reaction yes of course dilute alkali so you will have oh negative in the solution now you can see why we call it as a nucleophilic addition reaction right so would you like to tally your results ch3 ch3 c oh right the electrons here and this gets attached here and then we have ch2 co ch3 so what does it have it has a ketonic group and an alcoholic group keto and oh group right so that is why keto and alcohol makes it a ketol but as i said earlier usually you will find the term aldol only in most of the places all right the general name now why don't you go ahead and write the iupac name of this compound give it a try and if you are not able to do it please you can brush up your concepts on iupac nomenclature on again the videos on iupac system of nomenclature there's a separate playlist on that mm you want to refer okay your ketonic group gets preference over the oh group now go ahead and name it now i have posed a question to you over here what if i take an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen and a ketone with alpha hydrogen what will be the products formed okay so let's start with the let's say the first one we've got ch3 ch double bond o and my ketone gives the alpha hydrogen ch2 co ch3 write the product right oh but what if the aldehyde comes across another aldehyde molecule you remember chemical reactions are all about collisions or what about if a ketone collides with another ketone and it says okay boss you give me the alpha hydrogen atom right or <laughs> there is a fourth scenario as well what if instead of the um ketone giving the alpha hydrogen an aldehyde and a ketone come together but the uh, aldehyde gives the alpha hydrogen atom oh my don't worry just go ahead complete these reactions so it will be a good practice as well as there will be good understanding as well so look at all the products that you can get over here product number 1 2 3 and 4 simple carry out the nucleophilic addition i am not writing the products you have to write it yourself unless you write it yourself there's no point in watching hundreds of videos organic chemistry is all about writing and doing it it's just like mathematics So after you've written the products you will realize that 1 2 3 4 you're getting four types of products you are getting a mixture of aldols and ketols what's the point of getting a mixture it will be a complete mess right so this particular combination wherein i have an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen and a ketone with alpha hydrogen atom is not of much synthetic value right i can't make much use of it so let me make your life simple so what we are going to do is let's take an aldehyde with no alpha hydrogen atom and an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen atom can you give me an example of an aldehyde with no alpha hydrogen atom yes let's take the simplest one so we've got over here h c h double bond o right this doesn't have alpha hydrogen atom no this is the hydrogen which is attached to the functional group cho so you cannot call it as alpha hydrogen 
and what about the aldehyde with alpha hydrogen atom so that's our simplest dearest one h ch2 cho what aldehyde is this of course this is ether null right okay what is the condition of the reaction dilute NaOH or dilute KOH remember dilute alkali not the concentrated so what do you do now simple positive negative positive negative negative to positive positive to negative I am keeping things simple so H C H O H and C H 2 C H O right this reaction becomes possible of course you can have a reaction of uh, ethanol with another ethanol as well but it's simpler this way right as compared to the previous one where you had a mixture of so many products this type of a combination where you are getting a mixture of aldols and ketols when you are taking an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen or a ketone with alpha hydrogen atom or otherwise the uh, okay so let's name this first this is called as crossed aldol condensation right it's an extension of aldol condensation now notice over here there is no small molecule being uh, released over here so technically it's not exactly a condensation reaction it's just it looks like an addition reaction right why do we call it condensation i'm going to explain it a little later Another example of an aldehyde with no alpha hydrogen atom C6H5 CH double bond O, right? And an aldehyde with alpha hydrogen atom, or we can also take a ketone with alpha hydrogen atom, anything. Okay, again, I'm going to, you want, let's stick to this CH2 CHO, right? What is the condition of the reaction? again dilute alkali right go ahead form the addition product c6h5 ch oh ch2 cho right this is easy uh, rather than having four products now again and again i'm saying that these are actually addition reactions and not condensation reactions right because there's no simple molecule being released over here usually condensation reactions are those where two or more molecules combine releasing a simple molecule like water ammonia alcohol right we've talked about condensation reactions in the types of organic reactions earlier but why do we call them as condensation they become condensation reactions if here i've got an aldehyde with the alpha hydrogen atom combining with another molecule of its type in the presence of a dilute alkali to give me an alde aldol now if i treat this with a dilute acid and heat it what will happen is it loses a water molecule H and OH. So it will turn into an unsaturated molecule. So CH3, CH double bond, CH, CHO. Again, carbon functional group, alpha, beta, right? So this becomes an alpha, beta and there is unsaturation and an aldehyde group. Alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde is formed as a product of this condensation reaction why we are using the word condensation because water molecule is being released over here 
Hence, this type of these type of reactions are synthetically very useful in order to prepare alpha beta unsaturated aldehydes or ketones. What will be the IUPAC name and the common name of this compound? What is going to get preference? Go ahead and name it. I am waiting for you to write the products. The name of the products, obviously. Remember the system of naming 1, 2, 3 and 4. So this is a 4 carbon chain, no substituents. So what do we call it as? But. Now it's in. With what number do we denote it? 2 or 3? IUPAC says go for the smaller. The smaller the better. Right? 2 in. Right? And at the first position there is al aldehyde group which I can either write it as but 2 enal or I can also write it as but 2 in 1 al. Both are correct. Okay, now how many of you got it right? If you got it right, then give me a big smile. Show me a big happy face and put it in the comment section. My God, my smileys. Oh, ho, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, now your turn to take a chance. Go ahead, write the addition product followed by the product of condensation. So, what do you get? Addition followed by elimination. What will be the product formed here? I have made things simple for you because I have already written the ketone over here and the ketone showing the alpha hydrogen atom. Yes, it is the same molecule. So, what do we have? Try, try for yourself. Pause the video. You can always finish watching it later on also. But the actual learning will happen when you write the things yourself. Right? And then we carry out heat dehydration. Dehydration HOH. And what do we get over here? CH3, CH3. C double bond CH, CO, CH3. Now, it's your turn to name this compound. Now that you know the exact story behind aldol condensation, can you form the product formed by the elimination of water from here? Go ahead and complete this reaction. So, if we heat it in the presence of a dilute acid, what will be the product formed? A similar... Yes, go ahead. I don't need to say anything. You are quite fast at understanding this. Right? Now, if you notice here, I took an aromatic aldehyde with no alpha hydrogen and I reacted it with an aldehyde or we could have used a ketone as well but something which is having an alpha hydrogen atom. Treat it in the presence of a dilute alkali followed by dehydration in the presence of an acid to give us an unsaturated product C6H5 CH double bond CH CHO. What did I do? Simply removed a water molecule from here. This reaction is specifically known as the Claisen schmidt condensation or simply Claisen reaction. Sorry about the spelling. I need to correct it over here. Yes, I think now I've got it right. Claisen schmidt condensation or simply Claisen reaction. 
i hope you are writing the reactions alongside because now we are going to move on to mechanism so if you are not getting the reaction right we need to practice that so that you can understand the mechanism as well so let me write the products for you h c h double bond c h c h o right now coming to the mechanistic principles and why what makes the aldehydes or ketones with alpha hydrogen atom behave differently in an alkaline medium and what kind of an alkaline medium yes please don't forget that we are talking about a dilute alkaline medium so here we've got to look at the observations in the reaction mixture which we've studied and what we realize is that in the presence of an alkali the alpha hydrogen atom is capable of being pulled away by the alkali so what is actually happening over here is that my aldehyde starts behaving a little differently but only in the presence of an alkali and it is happy to do away with this proton of its and it is pulled by the electrons of the alkali right the electrons on the oxygen atom correct thus forming what we've got is ch2 cho right a negative ion a negative carbon a carbon which is carrying a negative charge will be known as a carbon non anion carbon a carbon which is behaving as an anion right a carbon anion now why would it do that who will support it it's basically the electron withdrawing character of the c double bond o group now because our c double bond o group is electron withdrawing what it does is it helps the hydrogen to leave see got it so the hydrogen is now short of electrons because my c double bond o over here decides to pull the electrons so it says okay so carbon says okay then i am also going to pull the electrons away from you that is what actually happens here i have shown the structure of the ion to put it more clear so this is what is happening it's a tug of war so uh, or a chain reaction i would say so c double bond o oxygen pulls the electrons from here and carbon says okay i need to satisfy myself and i want to pull the electrons so that i get a double bond character and okay h over here and o negative over here and h over here with the result h is positive it is short of electrons and the alkali comes and says okay boss i think i can give you electrons and it lures away the hydrogen so we have an intermediate over here which is known as the carbon anion and this is happening only in an alkaline medium remember in none of the nucleophilic reactions we showed this character right so first we said is that the c double bond o group here because of its electron withdrawing nature it helps to uh, it helps the hydrogen to move away and at the same time the carbon anion that is formed which we call as the enolate ion it gets a resonance stabilized right the word is resonance stabilization now let's understand that resonance stabilization and let us understand the name also now if you see over here the ion which is formed so imagine that there is a hydrogen over here right so this particular ion that i've got it's an in right a double bonded compound and it's an all because it's got the alcoholic group when i do away with the hydrogen now it becomes an ion which is formed from enol so enol 
getting converted into a carbon anion now how do you name the anions how do you name carbonate S sorry <laughs> what is the formula for carbonate co3 2 negative it's a negative ion how will you name so4 2 negative sulfate how will you name po43 negative phosphate right so this now becomes enolate ion it took me a while to understand why we are calling it enolate but i think it's easier to understand it this way right now let us understand the so that's what i put over here in plus all plus a negative charge gives us a enolate ion now look at the resonance stabilization so we are going to show the first step where the hydrogen leaves away leaving carbon with a negative charge second step is where the electrons are pulled by the oxygen with the result we have now got oxygen with a negative charge and the electrons lone pair now turning into a double bond so this shows the resonance stabilized enolate ion by the way this reaction mechanism is not required by all the syllabuses all the curriculum so you may uh, understand or omit it as per the requirement of your syllabus okay i thought it would make sense to cover it since we are doing it uh, organic chemistry in a lot of detail now continuing from where we left so what happens is yes i've just carried forward what we did in the last slide now i've got a carbonyl compound the, i've got a carbon anion a carbon anion is going to behave as a nucleophile so simple nucleophilic addition is going to take place over here the nucleophile goes and attacks the uh, negative sorry the nucleophile goes and attacks the positive or the negative center nucleophile nucleus loving remember we've already dealt with nucleophiles and electrophiles in earlier earlier videos so positive by negative and negative by positive that's it so i get an intermediate right by the way all these are reversible processes so you will notice the reversibility sign over here okay i have not put the reversible sign in this one let me add it the last step of this reaction is protonation because if you notice over here now my oxygen is with a negative charge it's heavily burdened it is not happy so what happens here is i have a base I'm going to simply put it as H positive and OH negative. So it attracts the proton from here. So in the end result, OH and CH2, CHO. And our alkali is regenerated at the end of the reaction. The alkali that we needed in the first process in order to generate the enolate ion. So we have three steps in the entire mechanism. First is the formation of the enolate. Second is nucleophilic addition. And third step is protonation. Have you all got them right in place? Now based on this mechanism, what do you think would be the reactivity of the aldehydes and the ketones relative to each other? Which one of these would be more reactive and which of these would be less reactive? Would aldehydes be more reactive or ketones would be more reactive? Think. Think of all the factors that you can. Uh, yes. You see over here the nucleophile has to approach the carbonyl group. Right. So if it is heavy, if there are a lot of groups present, do you think it will be able to accommodate? No. No plus they are electron releasing as well so if you have more alkyl groups over here do you think then the hydrogen would be able to leave that easily so based on these two points we see that the reactivity of ketones towards aldol condensation is lower than that of aldehydes because of steric hindrance 
and of course the electron releasing alkyl groups remember more alkyl groups means the stability of the carbon anion will reduce but remember when we talk about reactivity we cannot just define or uh, specify reactivity on the basis of two points there are a lot of other factors so what are the other groups which are present so when i compare two ketones if there they have a halogen atom attached to them so other factors also come into play please make sure that when you are comparing the reactivity you take all factors into consideration in the next video we will be taking up the disproportionation reactions or the reactions of aldehydes and ketones with concentrated alkali so don't forget your pen and paper that time as well and for ready reference i'm going to post these uh, teaching notes on to pen and paper chemistry google site as well till then take care stay happy and happy learning to all of you